Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A Detroit family demanded answers after their 15-year-old son drowned during swim class. More than two months later, the teen's swim teacher is now facing charges for his death. We're glad you're with us tonight at 11. The prosecutor's office says the teacher left his class alone and went into another room. Moments later, Deshaun Blanding was discovered at the bottom of the pool. Jason Colthorpe is at Mumford High School tonight to explain why these charges may just be the beginning. Deshaun Blanding's mother, Christina, is happy with these charges, but make no mistake, this is not justice in her eyes. This is just the start of finding out who else was involved in her son's death. It is not easy from having your child for 15 years and waking up and you don't have your child. The last three months haven't been easy for Christina Blanding. Her son Deshaun died February 24th after being found at the bottom of the Mumford High School pool by the swimming teacher Kareem Sigler. Today, the 47 year old Sigler who pulled Deshaun from the pool and performed CPR was charged with involuntary manslaughter. He should be going to prison because he wasn't there. And if um, he was there, this would never happen. He could have saved his own self by him being there. Prosecutors say Sigler was in the other room when Deshaun fell into the pool. But how he got there is what his mother still wants to know. He looked like someone beat my child and threw him in the water. This was harassment. This was a foul play. Approximately 16 other students were in that class, and Blanding and her attorney, Johnny Hawkins, believe there's more than just gross negligence by the teacher. I would hope that you would have the decency to treat this as if it were your child and come forward to help Ms. Blanding. Blanding thinks some parents aren't letting their kids come forward, and that's part of an anger she can't yet let go of. I'm always going to be angry about this. And they still haven't found who did this to my child, so yes, I'm always going to be angry. I have to wake up every day and not see my child. Hawkins believes at some point those students and parents will come forward, whether it's voluntarily or by subpoena. As for the criminal trial, Sigler will be arraigned on Wednesday morning. On the west side at Mumford High School, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. All right, Jason, the state reporting 469 new cases of the coronavirus, bringing the statewide total to more than 48,000. Today's headlines, Dr. Anthony Fauci revealing during his Senate testimony he's optimistic about scientists developing a vaccine, but he doesn't expect one in time for the start of the school year. Here at home, the Archdiocese of Detroit announcing public masses will be able to resume one week from today. We'll take a look at the guidelines being put in place coming up at 1130. And the state's education budget will likely take a big hit come next school year, with lawmakers expecting a 10 to 25 percent cut. What many people are unaware of is that testing for the COVID-19 antibody is readily available and testing for the virus has been expanding. Our Mara McDonald live tonight in Bloomfield Hills. Mara, actually both of these tests are being offered at Beaumont Urgent Care Clinics. That's right, Devin, and you can just walk in and get it if you have to. Beaumont tells me that the antibody test is available at all of their urgent cares and the COVID virus test is available at some. Urgent cares like emergency rooms have seen a precipitous drop in traffic. People are afraid of catching the virus, which is why they want you to know that not only is testing available, but they're taking all precautions. For example, they'll bring you into the clinic if you are free of any symptoms and they'll finish your registration. And if they find that our rooms, our exam rooms are full or our waiting room is more than one or two people, they'll ask you to go back into a car and wait for the exam room. The COVID-19 antibody test is readily available at Beaumont Urgent Cares. But remember that a positive result is not a golden ticket. It's wholly unclear whether having had the virus grants you any type of immunity. You can just show up to get the antibody test or you can book it online. Some people may not be uh, very tech savvy and, and not comfortable doing it online. So we want to make it convenient for what's best for you. Which means you can also just walk in and request the antibody test. The cost depends on what your insurer is willing to pick up. As far as being tested for the virus itself at urgent care. Register online for through a virtual visit or if you show up again, they're going to screen you. And if you have symptoms, they're going to ask you to go back into your car, do a virtual visit, and then they will set up an appointment so you can actually get COVID testing. 
Back here live, there are a lot of people around the state who say they had COVID-like symptoms in early February, even January. And I will tell you that Ohio says it has figured out that it had coronavirus in Ohio in January because of antibody testing. We're live in Bloomfield Hills tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. It'll be really interesting to see what that unlocks for us. All right, Mara. Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle is calling on the governor to ease up on the restrictions and get people back to work. Hackle says the governor's six phase reopening plan is too complex, and he believes now that we've flattened the curve, it's time to move forward. And even the hospitals are saying we've obtained that goal now. We were able to kind of make that uh, a non issue. And so now the question is why are we still, you know, pushing forward with this non essential opening in a slow, progressive way? Governor says her team is still using facts and data to guide how to safely re-engage our state's economy. Meanwhile, the pandemic has people wondering about the future of one of Macomb County's most popular malls. What impact will it have on Partridge Creek? One of the stories we'll be following tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. on Local 4 News Today. Well, tonight we know what gambling will look like when MGM Grand in Detroit reopens. The casino says every other slot machine will be placed out of service. The number of players allowed per table will be limited. Plexiglass barriers will be set up at tables where social distancing isn't possible. Employees will wear face coverings and have their temperature taken before entering. And guests will be screened and offered free masks. The casino says changes were made after months of research. The COVID crisis in America has sparked House Democrats to unveil the largest relief bill ever. It includes funding for testing and a new round of $1,200 stimulus checks, but the bill is being met already with heavy opposition from Senate Republicans. What Nancy Pelosi is proposing will never pass the Senate. A warning from Senate Republicans to House Democrats on their next proposed coronavirus stimulus aid. The price tag of the bill, more than $3 trillion, making it the largest relief package in history. It's got so much unrelated to the coronavirus, it, it's dead on arrival here. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi jabbed back, saying time is of the essence. Because the families who are suffering know that hunger doesn't take a pause, the rent doesn't take a pause, the bills don't take a pause, the hardship of losing a job or tragically losing a loved one doesn't take a pause. Now facing an outbreak in the White House, Vice President Pence is distancing himself from President Trump. Now, the vice president has made the choice uh, to keep his distance for a few days, and I would just note that that's his personal um, decision to make that. Across the country in the nation's largest county, Los Angeles, stay-at-home orders are expected to be extended through July with a gradual easing of restrictions. Our hope always is that we're able, by using the data, to be able to lift restrictions uh, slowly over the next three months. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell says the relief package would provide more than $7.3 billion to the state of Michigan, including $637 million to Wayne County. The House could vote on the bill as early as Friday. All right, another freeze warning in effect overnight. Let's get over to Ben, who is uh, ready to promise that tonight will be the last time we'll see those freezing temperatures until fall, Ben. Should I give you the scouts honor? Uh, <laughs> it really looks like we could, Kim, uh, especially when you see the forecast coming up. Uh, I think we may be out of the woods once we get past tonight. Uh, freeze warnings in effect until 8 p.m. or 8 a.m., I should say, and it's for everybody except Sandalac County, where the growing season still has a little bit less of an impact up there. So let's get right to it. These are the lows we're expecting. Not everybody's going below 32. Uh, we think most of the uh, metro zone will be at or above that mark. We're calling it 34 there for an official low in Romulus. South zone, Lenaway County, you'll probably hit the 32 mark. Maybe not so much in Monroe County, closer to the water. West zone, much of the area 32 or below and same goes for the north zone as well so this will be the last night that we'll be covering plants dragging in those pots we can finally get the uh, green light to go to the garden after tonight passes so i know a lot of folks are anxious for that we'll look at some more optimistic temperatures coming up in just a few minutes guys Okay, sounds good, Ben. Thank you. Well, as more states start to reopen, experts warn about the consequences of moving too fast. Still ahead, our Dr. Frank George going inside the numbers and whether Michigan is ready to reopen anytime soon. Tim. It was all eyes on the skies today with the Blue Angels, the Thunderbirds, the KC-135s, and the A-10. Warhawks. I feel like everybody has a, a small part to play, and, and maybe today was my small part. Coming up, I go one-on-one -on -one with one of the pilots. 
in today's aerial salute and word of an encore performance tomorrow. Breaking out from wearing a mask, it's a common problem, especially if you haven't worn a mask before. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., I'll show you some simple steps to help protect your skin. People talk to me about Frank McGeorge all the time, where misinformation spreads all around the world like wildfire. Frank just has this really measured approach to some very complicated things. Well, Frank is an emergency room doctor. I am seeing firsthand what's really going on. His producer, Sarah Mayberry, has a master's degree in public health. We are really, really fortunate. Frank is always there for us. and.